How this is sounding right now, but this is like what I'm feeling. One time, two times. Uh. Oh, I got you. I got you. Me, you, 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 me. All right, let me stop so they don't. Um, oh, no, I got it. I got it. I swear I got it. Yo, let me stop that song. I mean, if they don't let me monetize, it's okay. I'm going to keep that in there because I love that song. It's by Hudson East. And I've been listening to that song for probably like six years now. So I'm putting you on. (laughs) Anyway, though, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of The Amore Code. And listen, we got to talk about last week's episode and how clearly lit I was. Okay. It, it happened. We, we've all been there. Um, I don't know how many of us record it and post it for everyone else to see. But I mean, I really didn't want to post that. I did want to post it. And then I didn't want to post it. I didn't want to. Um, when I came to record that episode, I still was a little apprehensive of coming up here and sharing what I shared in that past episode, which is why I decided to put, fill this up with wine and drink it. Not the best decision, but you know, that's life. And I learned, I somewhat learned my lesson. So we're going to film this episode. If you haven't seen last week's episode, that was the first, technically the first full episode of the Amore Code because I had conversation in the beginning and then I answered, um, I played, um, the voicemails for the viewers that or the people that are you guys, me and Morris, that follow me on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for leaving your voicemails. I very much so appreciate it. I want this podcast and this podcast will be about conversation, um, questions that I have, and then your feedback of what you guys feel or what your thoughts are about the questions that I ask in the podcast. And I really want to play those. I just don't want to talk to myself or just ignore what you guys are thinking because my thoughts are my thoughts, but I am so open to other thoughts because it helps me become a better person. It helps maybe inspire somebody or enlighten somebody else. You know, conversation is conversation. There's no right. There's no wrong here. Um, I'm just coming to you guys, gradually opening up and trying to be as vulnerable as I can be with some time, at the same time, maintaining um, privacy. Like, how do you do that? That's the thing that I think about all the time. Like, how do you become a public figure, <laughs> but still maintain your privacy? I feel like Beyonce does that very well. Nicki Minaj does that very well. Um Yeah, so I'll figure it out as I go. But yes, thank you guys so much for those who watched the first episode. Thank you guys so much for those who called in and left a voicemail. And for this episode, I have a couple of voicemails. So thank you so much for participating. And yeah, I want to start off by saying that these podcasts are brought to you by Skin Seeds. Skin Seeds is a mindful skincare line that focuses on being present present and mindful during your skincare routine. 
I will be taking my makeup off with the Skin Seeds Sunflower uh, Seed Oil Cleansing Balm. This is a, the first step um, of a two part system. So Skin Seeds offers natural skincare and um, this is the double cleansing kit. This is step one of two of the double cleansing kit. And it has sunflower seed oil in here, castor oil, um, lavender oil. It smells like so clean. And I make these products. This is actually my own brand. Um, but this is what I actually use. And this is what I will be using to take off my makeup tonight. Will I take it off on camera? Who knows? Um, I said last week that I would not come up here with um, a heart filled of wine. But, <laughs> you know, we're going to see if we could just... Is it a hole in us? Because... What is going on? I think it's a hole in this cup, and that is very unfortunate. Oh, wow. I really did that on camera. Oh, my goodness. Let me just go ahead and... Oh, my goodness. I do not want to repeat of last week because my eyes were just, like, everywhere. But anyway, though, um, last week's episode um, taught me that I am boiling something right now. If you hear that in the background, that's what that sound is. I'm boiling something. But um, it, like, not only am I sharing my thoughts with you guys, but I get to look back at my my thoughts when I edit these videos. And it taught me when I was going back and editing the podcast for you guys is that I have a lot of emotions built up. And also, I'm very expressive. And I hear this a lot from other people when I interact with other people. But seeing it for myself and just being completely like my inhibitions are just like, what are those? Because of she. Um, It really like, I don't know, enlightened me to my own personality. So let me bring my little heart out. Uh, so again... This, these podcasts are brought to you by Skin Seeds, which is my own skincare line uh, right now. It's a very small line, but I've been very simplistic in my skincare. I do double cleanse. Um, I double cleanse in the evening time, which is what I'm going to do after I finish recording. I'm going to do the first step, which is the cleansing balm that I just showed you. And then the spirulina seedlings. I wish I had that by me. Um, but they're actual seeds that I'm going to use to cleanse my face. And then I have uh, my cream of the crop all over um, moisturizer that I use for my body and my face. That's it. Serums. Ugh. Oils. I mean, I'll do an oil, but I'm going to make my own. I make my own oil and I'm going to package that up for you guys. I'm still figuring out the formula for that. But I do that and I put my body, um, my cream of the crop moisturizer on and my heat just came on. I was like, what is that? So yeah. Um, Skin Seeds, check it out. Follow it at Skin Seeds. And mindfully so to reap the glow. There's so many great things that I'm working on for Skin Seeds. So just follow the brand. Follow the message. Um, Skin Seeds is very unique because I do, I'm, I'm doing this by myself, okay? Let's be real out here. We be hustling. People be hustling. They got their different side, different streams of revenue. I make my products. I make my content. I edit my content. I ship my products. I do all of this all on my own while managing this brand. So for me to keep my sanity and to also still enjoy and love what I'm doing, I do a thing called harvest times. So harvest times are like a scheduled time where I know, wow, this thing is leaking. Oh, that is so unfortunate. This is a little heart cup and it's not going to make it. <laughs> no. I do harvest times. And harvest times is, harvest times are, Scheduled times when I sell my seeds. Seeds are the products within my brand. Currently, I am offering the double cleansing kit, which is 
this two of these one is a balm that helps you remove makeup and also moisturizes your skin i use this solely in the morning too and then there's another part that looks just like this but it's seeds and that's what you use as a cleanser to wash your face after that i offer an aloe glow sheet mask a cultivation clay mask so the aloe glow sheet mask adds moisture the cultivation clay mask detoxifies uh, detoxifies your skin it pours gives refinement with the skin texture and uh the cream of the crop mango body butter that's all over that you use on your body and your face and that's great for your complexion um and evening out your skin tone and moisturizing you so yeah check that out I feel like I, that's a long commercial but i mean this is my podcast we can do what we want to do but i'll figure it out please give me your feedback so um what i've been thinking about so I mentioned last week that I do work at a gentleman's club as a bartender. And um, I've learned that interacting, like I'm learning a lot with interacting with men and how, how that goes in that type of environment. And one thing I want to say, because I can only speak from my perspective of being a dark-skinned woman is that it's all about your attitude. It's all about your attitude, your confidence, and that's it. What's interesting is that when you've been through different things or when you've had experience with men and you can detect bullshit, men know that you can detect that. Men know whether or not if you can detect that and men know whether or not you're going to call them out on that. So they will treat you accordingly. And that's not only in the gentleman's club. That's within life. That's within even the same sex. We unconsciously read people. We know who to and who not to mess with so with that being said know what you stand for and know what you will not tolerate because people they might not be able to put a finger on it or be able to verbalize or vocalize as to why they don't try certain things with certain people but it's just a thing that we know within each other that we know we know And we don't even have to say anything. We just know how to address ourselves when we're approaching somebody. So have a great attitude. Know who you are and work on your confidence every day. Now let's get into these questions, um, these voicemails. So last week, um, I had a lot of voicemails because, I mean, I guess it was the first episode of the Amore Code. And I really thank you guys for calling in. This week, not so many message uh, voicemails, but I am so thankful for the ones that I do have. So I'm just going to go ahead and play them. And what I'm going to do, I played two of them already, but I didn't play these other ones. And I'm just going to go ahead. Is this still recording? Oh my goodness, let me see. It's still recording, thank you. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and <laughs> see what they say while I'm recording, so let's go ahead and get into it. I just wanted to call into your podcast and ask you to be my girlfriend. That's all. Nothing too serious. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Girlfriend, what does that mean? Like, a boyfriend i guess that's the time that you like get to get to know the other person right girlfriend boyfriend like my thoughts on that title like what is that you're still single I'm at the point where, like, I mentioned in my last um, podcast that I've been married before. 
and um, I view relationships very differently. So you saying I'm your girlfriend and you're my boyfriend, I just feel like I don't know. I don't hold any weight into that. We can date, you know, date, get to know one another, but I'm still single. And does that mean I'm for the streets? No. Because I don't give my energy or time to just anybody. I just want to feel. I want to feel something real. I want to be able to be real with somebody. I want to be able to trust that I can tell somebody how I feel in that moment and just be me. And I want that person to be themselves also within the relationship. And the relationship not having a title, but just being. And then when you're in that, like you start not seeing other people. Like you don't see other people because you're just thinking about the other person. And respecting that other person as to like, okay. Just genuinely thinking about, okay, if I were to do this or say this this person will feel disrespected but then when you're having this relationship you both know the intentions at the beginning and you see you got to say these things at the beginning you got to be bold enough to ask these questions at the beginning of these situationships relationships as to what your goal is right now my goal is to i'm not gonna say But I just, the boyfriend-girlfriend thing, I believe in commitment. Because you could be boyfriend and girlfriend and still not have commitment. You could be married and not have commitment. It's just a title. I want commitment. And I want a commitment from a man. And then I want also to be able to commit. Because, I mean, I feel like it's so much so we got to get the man to commit as a woman. But, like, (laughs) when you live out here, you got to, as a woman, and you know your power as a woman, you got to be able to commit, too. You got to be able to see a guy and know that, okay, this guy's popping. He can get girls or whatever. But is he going to commit to you? Are you that woman that's going to bring a commitment out of him? And then as a woman, when you know you can get guys and you're popping, are you going to commit to them? Like, and that is a thing that you like, hold up now, I'm burning some up. <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. My friends. My friends that watch that watch this podcast, they're going to know what I'm cooking. <laughs> and they're going to know. They're going to know that that happens all the time. <laughs> but I can cook, though. Don't come for me. Anyway, though. Commitment. Being committed is a lifestyle. You move differently. You choose what you do differently. And I'm just ready for, am I ready for that lifestyle of commitment? Yes. Because yes and no. The lifestyle of commitment. It is a lifestyle. Commitment is a lifestyle. And I think about that all the time. Am I ready for that lifestyle? Yes, I am. Because that lifestyle, if you want to be commit, if you are committed to a person, you are fully head over heels in love. And then you're also kind of like logical within the sense of you understand that you're both building towards a common goal. And then I feel like within that entity, you get there very much so faster. If that's what you want, I mean. <sighs> commitment man and you're not worried about being chosen by somebody else you don't see other people you're just with that person because they satisfy you 
So I'm just working that, working on that within myself. So thank you for leaving that voicemail. It was from Anonymous. But you know what? I'm going to say it. Anonymous sent me a DM too. So he not really that anonymous. So I know who you are. But thank you for your voicemail. Oh, and then to answer your question. I feel like I answered it in that long drawn out thing. So next one. Hey, hey, I don't have any particular topic that I want to talk about. I just want to say I love your content. I look forward to it all the time. Anytime I see that green ring around your name, I know it's lit. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You know, what's interesting right now, since I changed up my um, content and I haven't really been a consistent poster since I ever started this thing. So the following that I've gotten has been off of natural hair and I don't know how else, but um, since I switched up my content to show that I'm doing podcasting now, my engagement has really changed. And I mean, I don't, I notice it, but I'm just going to keep going. And um, for the people that aren't with it, please unfollow me um, sooner than later because I'm just going to keep going. I don't care. This is just, I refuse. I have met so many people li that live their life towards the algorithm. They live their lives for social media and as to how much engagement that they're going to get that they don't even like, they're like, billboards they're not even people when you see them in real life like if they go somewhere it's because of the gram or and i've interacted with a lot of those type of people but i just want to be able to express myself not be canceled for it because people are people and people be people in so i mean i'm just going to continue doing this and being consistent and um for the people that are with it, you know, share it with people that are interested in what I'm talking about, even though it's a lot about nothing. But I mean, who cares? <laughs> Why not? Why not? There's so much serious stuff going on. I mean, I am about self-care. I'm out about self-love. I'm, I'm about Black empowerment and people empowerment and all the buzzwords that are going on. But like, why does everything have to be so serious? Oh my gosh. Can we just like talk about memes over here? So that's where I kind of want to take this. I want to sometimes like just break down the intricacy of the memes because memes, that is a whole intelligent thing right there. Like you are able to express and relate such deep emotion with just a picture or just a 15 second clip like that is crazy how powerful memes are how they're shared how it becomes monetized that is a thing that should be talked about and dissected and that's where i want to do i'm gonna do it here i want to break down that here so i mean this podcast right now we're just talking and you guys you guys are leaving a voicemail so thank you so much for that voicemail thank you so much for your compliments i haven't been doing many funny um act up stories at this moment but i do plan on getting back to that i just got to figure this out i got to get over my jitters and just keep going and whatever you guys are working on in your life and you're not seeing the feedback that you expect that you expected initially that's okay we, we are microwave babies. Get out of that. That's not reality. You have to keep going. And that's what weeds people out who keeps going. So just keep going. So let's listen to another one. I got enough time on this. Let me take it off of this speaker. I have it on. All right, press play. Hey, girl. So I feel like, you know, to answer your question about the toxic pages, I feel like, you know, these toxic pages are relatable 
things that they post, you know, some someone that's going through it can look at it and be like, yo, dang, like, that's something I was thinking. Or it's like, shit, someone else went through that like me. Or you could be looking at it as, oh, another nigga out there told the same lie that my nigga told. Like, oh, shit, that's sus. Like, it's certain things with these pages that gravitate because it's toxic. And I'm guilty. I was following them myself. And then I had to realize, like, girl, how the hell are you going to attract what you want if you keep, you know, following this negativity? Because that shit is really negative. And these pages glorify negativity. So I think it's just more of, like, a relatable thing. That's why everybody's, like, so quick to repose or, you know, throw it up in their stories because we can all relate. But it's so unhealthy to relate. It's like we're glorifying the toxic shit we all went through. Exactly. Thank you so much, KK. That's my baby, um, KK Kezia. Follow her. I'll at her if I repost this on my Instagram or whatever. But I really agree. Like I mentioned in my last episode that I become upset because sometimes I relate to sometimes a lot of the times I relate to Justin LA ba- LA boys or niggas be broke okay. Uh, these are spam accounts that focuses on relationships and the toxicity that goes on and within relationships. And I get upset because I'm just like, why is this common? Why is this common? And then we laugh at the pain when we know when we're in it, it's painful. And then we normalize it. And then like, it's just like this cycle that continues and then it's magnified via social media. And then it's deemed as okay as this is how relationships should go. Now, I did say that I believe that all healthy relationships should have conflict, and I stand by that. Conflict shows how people react in certain situations. It shows how people communicate. It shows if you're able to communicate when there is a disagreement. I completely, I I don't live for conflict, but I like having conflict because I need to know how this person is going to show up in these different situations, but Like the things that are posted on those pages, it's just like, it makes me sad that I can relate to it and that so many other people have to go through it. And I did unfollow. I didn't, I don't think I ever even followed. I don't even know how it showed up on my algorithm, but I'm sorry. It is. Let me see what time it is in this time. It's 2.53 in the morning. Oh my goodness. Okay. (laughs) Just kidding but um it makes me just like i don't want to relate to that i want a healthy relationship with conflict does that exist yeah i i want to feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable and for the other person to feel comfortable enough to be vulnerable with me So then I think about that. I'm like, okay, so who do I have to be? And how do I have to show up for that person to feel comfortable enough that I would, what I would want to feel from that person? So that's what I'm working on now. A lot of people don't trust people because we don't trust ourselves. I feel like that's what I come to the conclusion. Like, you got to really trust yourself to know that you're going to be able to protect yourself or be able to soothe yourself if you have to do it alone just in case that person hurts you right sometimes you just like you feel like you gotta rely on other person people to make you feel better but you only owe it to yourself to make yourself feel better So to give yourself and to tell and to show yourself to other people and then trust them to guard your feelings. But like, what if they're just telling you your truth? Are you strong enough to be able to hear their truth or, you know? Let's listen to the last voicemail I have. I'm going to have to probably stop this recording because it ends at 30 minutes. So let me just stop it. Okay, we're back. Um, so I'm, I was getting into the last voicemail. Hey, Avi. Um, 
I would not, honestly, because perfection, with perfection, you don't know what could, like, growth, because you already hit, like, the peak. You're not growing after that. After you reach perfection, you're just going to be, like, stagnant after that. You just want to maintain. And once you maintain it, I'm going to pause that. So um, she is answering. So I asked, do you guys believe like a relationship should be perfect? Like who wants a perfect relationship? And that's what she's answering to. Hey, Avi. Um, I would not, honestly, because perfection, with perfection, you don't know what could like growth because you already hit like the peak. You're not growing after that. After you reach perfection, you're just going to be like stagnant after that. You just want to maintain. And once you maintain it, what could be a better thing? You will just let pass by you because you're already at. So, yeah, I want to grow with my boo. We could have our little issues or whatever, but whatever we learn from it, we could just get better. That's just why they say failure isn't a bad thing. That was great. Yeah. Learning together. When you're in a really good relationship, is when you start seeing other things outside it, like outside of you two growing. Like right now, I'm dealing with somebody. And this is like free therapy. Like when you're dating someone it like lets it exposes where you're vulnerable at where you're a little insecure at I mean if you're in a mindset to I've met people that when they start dating people they totally lose themselves like their entire life Exists and it happens a lot. Their entire entire existence and their it revolves around the relationship. Their outside goals or what they're working on it doesn't exist. And it's easy. It's sometimes easy to fall into that because it's just like you like the feels. I've been guilty of it. But then it's like when when things start going a little downhill in the relationships, it's really what to, that's where like the catalyst begins on whether or not you're going to progress or regress. You can regress when the relationship starts going downhill by like chasing the other person or feeling bad, having a negative self-talk as if like you're not worthy of relationships or you can progress because then you're just motivated to put more energy into your work, into your goals, to like what's the next level, how you can better yourself. And within the progression though, there can be a somewhat of regression because if you're doing it because you're motivated to get the person's attention, attention that's not good because like it's not going to be long lasting, but if you're doing it because you need to do that for you, that's beautiful. It's long lasting because you're going to keep going. You're not going to take things so personal. You're going to realize that, okay, when you're really working on yourself, sometimes you do need time for yourself. And then if the other person is saying that you might be a little bit more understanding or like say they are on some bullshit they're gonna eventually weed themselves out it's gonna inevitably happen so ladies men focus on yourself what would i tell men that should be another episode men if you are watching ask me a question as to like dating and how women think I might tell a little bit. I'll tell my mindset. I'm a little bit. If you follow me, I'm a little bit whimsical. I'm a little bit different. But ask me. I'll answer honestly. I'll answer honestly. 
to the point that I can't answer too honestly because, you know, I can't be giving away all the secrets. That's what makes that's what makes our interactions very juicy and intriguing because we don't know everything about one another. So, okay, so I answered those questions. I do want to read um some DMs. I'll read like one one or two DMs of the questions I've asked. So I'm gonna read this DM here. Let's see. Where is it? Did they take it back? <laughs> wow, did they take it back? Oh my goodness, they took it back. Well, the guy, he took, he DM'd me something. And it was very passionate. So I wish you didn't take it back. I, sh- I guess I should have said something. I just read it. But I get DMs. I just read them and I just let them go to the wayside. I guess I need to respond. I'm going to DM right now. I'm like, oh, I wish you didn't do that. Hey. <laughs> I'm DMing somebody right now. Hey. I was just about to read your DM on my podcast. (laughs) I wonder how he's going to feel. So this guy that I'm DMing, right? I met him at a beer garden or some type of rooftop restaurant in Brooklyn. Hey, I was just about to read your DM on my podcast. And (laughs) I realized and when I went to search for it, you took it back. Why you do that? Why did you do that? I wanted to share. I guess I should have no I yeah I guess I should have responded but I liked your response in honesty thank you thank you I can't remember what he said, but I felt it. And people don't remember what you say. They remember how you feel. So I met him one time in 2019. Wow. 2020 is like not even a year for me. Like that doesn't even exist for us, you guys. And I remember how he made me feel. And I'm pretty sure I he remembers how I made him feel because I'm DMing him. <laughs> Hey, boo. <laughs> but he was cute. He was cute. He was cute. Now you take back your message. Anyway, though. I guess. So I wanted to ask some questions, though. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to ask questions for the next week. And then how this works, though. The questions that I've asked, I don't know at what time you're watching this. It could be years later, and this is still going to be going. I'm going to challenge myself. Or it could be a month later. You can still answer these questions, and you can still use the link. Just let me know what question you're answering so I can, because it's going to start getting, it's going to start building up, and I'm not going to remember the questions that I'm asking. So just kind of quickly say what question you're answering. Just quickly say, like, brief, like, abbreviate it. And then answer the question, and we can still talk about it. This is an ongoing conversation. I ask questions like, what are you passionate about? How do you feel about toxic relationships, spam pages? Um, what was that the question that I asked? 
what what's your favorite rom-com and who are you in the rom-com what are you doing for valentine's day (laughs) you can still answer it i don't care what type of time of the year it is you know just tell me some funny stuff um what's your favorite saying i've asked that question on my instagram i didn't get any responses but um yeah so what i wanted to ask you guys oh so one question i wanted to ask is if you didn't know how old you are if you didn't know how old you are how old would you say like like, i'm sorry i'm sorry how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were i want so oh i'm sorry you guys okay so a question i want to ask is if you didn't know how old you were okay sorry okay so oh my goodness am i oh my goodness i am i promise you i'm not lit like how i was on my last episode that was just embarrassing um i just need to make sure i'm like getting my password right of course The recording okay so how old okay the question is <laughs> how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were and i'm inspired by this question because the reason why i asked this question is because i'm inspired a lot by eartha kit eartha kit was adopted she didn't really she doesn't really even know she didn't know how old she was she just said her age and you know you acknowledge what she said but if you didn't know how old you were how old would you be and that goes off of feeling and that goes off of your daily activity of how you live your life and your lifestyle i've met people my age and people depending on how your lifestyle is depends on how like vibrant people are and i would say if i didn't know how old i was and i would say how i feel I would say I would be, twenty, and the reason why I would say that is because I feel like I'm going through the college of life, and I feel like I'm about to graduate from this college of like what I'm learning, and I'm about to go out into the world with all this knowledge and well. I am so sorry for you guys' eardrums, but I am not editing that out. Um, I feel like I am learning um, from the school of life, and I'm about to go out into the real world. And I'm doing like, you know what, maybe, yep, and I'm doing my senior year um, capstone project. (laughs) And I'm about to go out into the real world and just show everybody what I have. I would say 20 and also because i work out all the time i have so much energy and if you guys follow me on instagram you know how i give it up i have so much freaking energy i am so blessed i i have so much energy you guys and i find myself doing extra things i don't do drugs i don't <laughs> do any type of drugs <laughs> I, okay, I smoked a couple times, you know what I'm saying? But that's not a normal thing that I do. I do drink wine, but wine makes you sleepy. But I still have so much energy. Like, oh my goodness, I thank God that like, it's just, it flows from me. And I just always have to be doing something. And it might seem to other people as being a busybody, but like, I'm just so thankful that I'm not exhausted or drained or... I'm just full of life. I'm full of life because I appreciate life. I experienced moments in my life that I didn't know if I was going to have my life the next day. I have experienced that maybe three times. I didn't know if I was going to have my life the next day. And I had to fight. I'm just so thankful. 
for my energy and I try to I try to give that to other people and I realize like they don't I don't know that's another story for another day if you have questions please put that down in the comments in the in the comment section in the YouTube section listen to this on Spotify um listen to my playlist check out my brand skin seeds mindfully soul to reap the glow it's a skincare line and until next Sunday thank you so much for listening Bye, babies. Me and Morris. <laughs>